now give the floor to United Nations Watch. Mr. President, this Council is charged with helping victims worldwide by promoting and protecting all human rights. These include the following guarantees of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Article 3, the right to life. Articles 2 and 7, the right to equality. Article 18, freedom of religion. Article 19, freedom of expression. Article 20, freedom of assembly. And Article 9, the prohibition against arbitrary detention. Mr. President, for these rights to have meaning, victims need to see implementation on the ground. Let us, therefore, consider a few examples to assess how we can better promote and protect human rights. Now, two weeks ago, Libya was finally suspended from this Council under the provision applying to members that commit gross and systematic violations. In this regard, and by way of example, we ask, do the laws, policies, and practices of Saudi Arabia, a Council member, respect the right of women to equality? If so, why are Saudi Arabian women prohibited from driving a car, voting in elections, or going, or going anywhere without the written permission of a male guardian? Is Pakistan, another council member, respecting freedom of thought and religion? If so, why was a woman sentenced to death on charges of blasphemy? Is Cuba, another council member, respecting freedom of the press? If so, why are independent journalists sentenced to prison? Is China, another council member, respecting freedom of expression? If so, why is the writer Lu Xiaobo in jail? Is Syria a candidate for election to this council respecting the prohibition against arbitrary detention? If so, why are human rights defenders Anwar al-Buni, Habib Saleh, Ali Abdallah, and Kamal Labwani being detained? Finally, is Nicaragua another candidate respecting the right to life? If so, why did President Ortega reaffirm his support for the murderous regime of Colonel Gaddafi, calling him, quote, his brother? Mr. President, we ask, why is this session choosing to ignore all of these victims with no proposed resolutions? And in light of this council's own charter, how can gross and systematic violators be allowed to sit here as council members and judge the rest of the world on human rights? Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs>